What's going on, everybody? We have the meta snapshot for patch 13.7b. Uh, me and Voidsin are both challenger, and it's just what we think are going to be the best comps for this patch. And there was like a small change last week. That's why we do have the B patch. It was just a hot fix to Shen's augment. Uh, not really too much has changed because of that. However, we did have the meta develop quite a little bit because we have a bit of a shuffling on what's best, what's worse. And we're going to go over all that, plus how to play every single one of these compositions. So starting off in the S tier, Lucian reroll. Very underplayed at the start but now it's a little overplayed pretty much lucian 3 just one taps everyone he hits leblanc hacker i'm sure that you guys know about this infamous comp i played a game of this recently too on my youtube channel if you guys want to check that out nar reroll honestly nar reroll is probably the strongest comp right now it's just a little bit harder to play and needs to meet more conditions but when you meet those conditions it probably has like one of the strongest comps in the game uh kaisa reroll pretty decent not as strong as the rest but very decent and then infiniteam is the classic like four cost carry that's the only comp that relies around like four and five costs that's in the s tier right now so that does say a little bit something about the state of the game right now but in the a tier we have the rest of them anima misfortune so anima is a little weird because how good anima is depends on what level you are at so if you are like lower rank Anima is going to be better. And then the higher rank you go, Anima is going to get a little bit worse. Spell Slinger, pretty solid comp. If you get like a good TF or Nico game, very solid. Jin, if you're going for attack damage comps and then like you don't go for Infiniteam, you go for Jin instead. Laser Core, pretty solid still. Threats, never your first choice, but it's a good fallback in case you want to get like a fourth or a third or something like that in some of those games. Build Different, very solid augment. I'd say it's like slightly above average. It's not like super broken or anything, but it's just slightly above average. Draven, if you get the good starts for it, very nice. A couple of different ways to play that, which we'll go over. Samira, honestly, like this comp has gotten a little better. I've seen a lot of people make great use of Mech Garen, both in like a threat comp and in the Samira comp. So that is something to like flex with the Garen. Uh, Jax, only play this if you get like a lot of Jaxes early. And then in the B tier, Vex, Maybe we're underrating Vex a little bit, but you never really see Vex too much. When you do get the comp going though, it is very powerful. It's just very hard to do that. So it's one of those things where it's like, if it happens, amazing, but it doesn't happen that often. Hearts, eh, not that great. Duelists, pretty much don't want to play that. And then Jinx, it's like, I guess if you get the Augment and you have like a ton of Jinxes, like you could go ahead and reroll that. So uh, we should be adding more of the reroll comps in the future based on their Augments. But a lot of these, they're just literally purely based on where their Augments are. And oh, by the way, if you guys want like the sub rankings, such as like what's S plus, S minus, A plus, A minus, uh, check out the Patreon or OnlyFans. So I actually do not like paid for content, but I wanted to make an OnlyFans at first just as a joke. And I didn't know what to put on it, so I decided to do that. And then after a while, like people were like, dude, I don't want to have an OnlyFans account just to like get TFT stuff. So it's like, please make a Patreon. So that's why we have both options up there. But all that stuff is optional. Like definitely like don't force yourself to like get it if you like you can't afford to or something like that. Um, and also only do one of them because they have the same information there. So uh, onto the S tier, we have Lucian. Lucian reroll, pretty basic stuff. You just re-roll for Lucian and then play as many quick draws as possible. So right now we have kind of like the base comp. It is Blitzcrank, Silas as your main tanks. You add in Camille for Renegade and then Ezreal for Quick Shot. It is super powerful with Enchanted Ammunition, but you don't need it. So unlike other reroll comps where you're like, hey, I really need the hero augment, especially the carry one, uh, Lucian doesn't need it. But ironically, his support augment is better for the reroll comp than his carry augment. Blitzcrank's carry augment is really good for Lucian reroll or for LeBlanc. So that's probably just one of the best one cost augments in the game. So you pretty much either want like a tanky admin or a team wide admin that buffs up your Lucian. Uh, so the only really thing you need is blue buff on Lucian. After that, just like tank items and any AP on Lucian will do. Like literally it could be anything. But to play it just like other reroll comps is that you want as much econ as possible. Obviously econ is important for any comp in TFT, but it is especially important for reroll comps because if you don't hit the three star, you're just completely screwed, right? So definitely try to either like full streak during stage two. Typically that's gonna be a lose streak because you're not gonna be leveling up aggressively. And then after stage two on Krugs, very important, roll down to around 30, 35 gold to get as many copies of Lucian, Blitzcrank, and Silas as you can. A lot of people skip this step. They're like, oh, let me just slow roll down to 50 gold every single turn with your excess gold. So they go from like 60 gold to 50 gold. And then they don't do this level four roll down at stage three one because you turn level five on stage three two automatically. There's nothing you could do to stop it. 
And that pretty much ruins the champion odds for finding all the one cost units. So definitely do not skip this step. Maybe I should put this in bold. But after that, you econ back up to above 50 gold and then slow roll until you three star all your units. So I would also sack your game to get a blue buff. Spear of Shojin is playable, but like only in a super, super worst case scenario. Blue buff is just infinitely better and it really stabilizes you and makes you take those like one unit losses instead of like the five unit losses in the early to mid game. So you definitely want to prioritize that as much as you can. If you do get Renegade Spatula, you could go five Renegade, uh, but I prefer just adding in a lot of quick draws. So you go for like four quick draw. You have this team up here, right? You have two. Uh, you just add in Kaisa Misfortune and then Lucian just kind of blows through everyone. And then if you ever happen to get lucky and get like a Misfortune 2, she could be like a pretty solid secondary carry. Keep in mind there are a couple of different versions of this team composition. Some people play it with Infinity Team. They do like Lucian Pantheon reroll. Uh, but this one's probably the strongest, but always keep your options open with the other comps because sometimes you just don't find the Blitzcranks and you find a lot of Pantheons and that's definitely when you should be going for that. Uh, for Augments, Axiomark, Golden Ticket, Thrill the Hunt, Featherweights, all this stuff is really good for any reroll comp. Uh, Axiom's really good to get them to cast twice. And then obviously the Renegade stuff's pretty good. And then for Hero Augments, you really only care about Lucian's Enchanted Ammo. Uh, but apart from that, like let's say you get two cost hero augment then camille's is pretty good and then if you get like three or four cost augment like the support kaisa one is decent if you don't have a jeweled gauntlet already and then for four costs uh, you could just get a tank because sometimes you don't end up playing the one cost tanks uh, because you only have them at two star so in those cases four cost tank just pick really any of them and you'll be fine but if you guys want to check out all the details on your own head on over to the website bunnymuffins.lol slash meta and you could also click each photo it brings you to a nice team builder that you can kind of customize your comp with. Uh, for example, you're like, oh, let me see what it looks like with like Kaisa and Misfortune. You could kind of like save it and then like refer to it later because uh, you could just copy the link yourself, add a team name, whatever you want to do. Let's move on into the next comp, which is going to be LeBlanc Hacker. Uh, what, what an infamous comp. So there's a big mistake that people are making with this build and it is putting tank items on Blitzcrank. You don't see this much at high elo, but in lower ratings, you see this a lot. Like people are like, oh, Blitzcrank's the main tank and I'm gonna itemize him because he's like tanky unit or they do Shen and don't do that. Do Pike, even two star Pike. He is one of the best units in the game because he AOE stuns the enemy and half of the time he gets their primary carry. Tell me what other two cost unit can do that. If we compare Pike to all the three cost units, I don't even think any of them come close to the amount of utility that Pike brings. So definitely itemize him, just anything defensive. And he also has the added bonus to apply Sunfire Cape and Ionic Spark to your enemy's backline units, which is really, really crucial, especially when you're running LeBlanc. So a couple of different builds with LeBlanc. And again, this is kind of rating dependent. So for beginners, I do suggest just going like the full ability power build that we have listed out here. Blue buff, Jeweled Gauntlet, and then like third item. It doesn't really matter which. We have like some suggestions down here and there's pretty much nothing wrong with those items but an even better build right now is going to be the edge of night jeweled gauntlet and archangel staff you're going to see this build a lot at higher ratings and the reason why is because archangel staff just scales her because the fights always last a long time jeweled gauntlet just like probably the best damage item for her because she gets a lot of ap from spell slinger and the admin admin often you give her ap and then edge of night's going to be the new key item of this patch because it gives her so much survivability that nothing else quite hits the same but pretty much the only way this comp loses is if leblanc dies right and how does that happen uh, she jumps to the back she kills someone but the enemy carry is also killing one of your dudes right so the enemy carry let's say kills your warwick and then they start targeting your leblanc so if your leblanc is like off cast cycle like she's one of the like it's one of those times where she's not uh, killing other units dealing damage to get healing from hacker she is just gonna die so the way to avoid that is using edge of night so she gets to the edge of night threshold and then she heals all the way back up when she finally casts her ability and then that often gives her enough time to kill the enemy carry so this is going to be like the best build right now um, but there's nothing wrong with the old build and a lot of people are going to say like hey what about blue buff on the block blue buff is good and if you have to build it early game definitely go ahead and build it but there's nothing that can compete with the build you see here right now like i can give you my word on that and we do have like other item recommendations down here. Uh, pretty much Edge of Night core and then just any two damage items will do. So you, you don't have to do Jeweled Gauntlet Archangels. You could do like 
blue buff rabidens or like giant slayer and blue buff or something like that uh, because obviously you still want to go for tears and rods uh, so other things that to keep in mind is that for augments axiom arc is incredible that was in my leblanc game that i played uh cybernetic uplink kind of does the same thing it just makes her like cast the entire fight because she's always going to use that mana for some reason she gains mana while she's casting and it looks like she's mana locked but she's not. She gains mana during that time, so Axiomark and Uplink are both really good for her. Golden Ticket or any other reroll augments such as Think Fast, also really nice. Thrill the Hunt is really good because she is single target damage. And then all the admin stuff is decent. Hacker Heart's good. Trade Sector, good for rerolling. Celestial Blessing's pretty decent too. And Future Sight is nice because whenever you're playing Assassin Comp, so that's why Zephyr Ring's pretty good, and it tells you who you're playing against. So you always know that feeling whenever you get hit on like the wrong side against an assassin team and if you just know who you're facing exactly every time you can position your leblanc perfectly and that's going to be that uh onto the augments aim assess is like nice because it gives you a copy of leblanc though i'd say an even better one is like recursion matrix or small game hunter because small game hunter it's a two cost augment and it really just allows her to kill all the squishy units like that much easier and it's just incredible. Another really good one is the Blitzcrank carry augment. In those cases, you do put tank items on Blitzcrank, but every other time, just put it on Pike. Uh, not everyone's doing it on Pike right now. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to read like the how to play section, again, it's going to be on the website. Uh, NAR Hacker. NAR Hacker is the other hacker comp right now, and it is incredibly strong. As I said before, it's probably the highest cap comp uh, that's like played a lot. Because oftentimes you just can't kill Nar, you still have to deal with the annoying Pike. But on top of that, the way Gadgetine works is that uh, you just get like a 30% damage reduction on your like main carry and your main tank and like some random other units as well. It, it's just really bothersome for a lot of people if they have three items. And you do get a lot of items because you get two extra ones from the Gadgetine buff. Uh, so it's just really, really powerful. And then if you ever get Gadgetine Soul, Gra Gadgetine Crest, or Gadgetine Heart, you pretty much just win the game. I think this goes from like S tier to like S plus plus tier if you get one of those augments because you reach so much power so early because you don't need to rely on hitting Nunu. It's almost impossible to hit Nunu early on and that makes the comp like a lot weaker obviously but if you have the heart then you don't need to do that to reach five Gadgetine and then you pretty much just win the game and if you get one of the emblems you drop it on Pike. Imagine a Pike taking 30% less damage. Yeah that sounds pretty good to me. I just realized we had that written out here. Like if you get Gadgetine Emblem, this comp is practically a free top four, not exaggerating. I am gonna echo that statement right now, even though we don't actually play Echo in the comp. So you wanna play this if you get Gadgetine start and have AD items. Normally when I play Gadgetine, I do it with AP items, but if you do this and have AD, you could think about getting, you could think about going Gnar. I'm not saying to force Gnar in those situations, but if you get like one or two copies of him, it's gonna be pretty enticing to do. Maybe you get like early hacker. I'd say if you miss, I'd say if you meet like two of those conditions, you should probably go ahead and play it. Just be sure to scout a lot because Nar, unlike LeBlanc, is not a range unit. So uh, he actually has to be next to the units he wants to kill. So just be sure to scout potential matchups. Make sure you can't really get blown up by their carry. Sometimes Lucian can just blow up the Nar before the Nar can kill the Lucian. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does. So sometimes you want to be opposite side. Sometimes you want to be same side, but definitely scout every single turn and try to like figure out how strong their carry is to make sure your NAR can actually kill them. So items on NAR, Titan's Resolve gonna be huge. Uh, Bloodthirster, having like the extra healing, sometimes the hacker isn't enough, is pretty good. And then Last Whisper if you need to kill tanks, but uh, stuff like Infinity Edge, some people say it's bugged right now and it makes his ability crit twice. Uh, one other note in speaking of bugs right now, do not play Prankster with the NAR hacker build because playing Prankster for some reason removes his Gadgetine buff of 30% more damage and 30% taking less damage. So that's why you never see Prankster being played with this build, even though it probably should be. Uh, but moving on into the next build, we have Kaisa reroll, standard three cost reroll comp. Uh, the difference here is you have a lot of things you can three star. So like Riven, Rel, Kaisa, Nyla, either your main tanks or your main carry. Really, really powerful stuff. Three quick draw, gonna deal a lot of damage, and you have a secondary carry in Misfortune if you are able to make it there. The only problem with this build is that it's really expensive, so I generally would only recommend going for this if you get the hold the line augment early, which is Rel's carry augment, or if you get a lot of gold. So if you have like prismatic econ augment or like a gold econ augment, you could kind of think about going into this 
and then just kind of see what happens after that. Make sure when you play 3 cost reroll, you stabilize a little bit at 3-2, and stable is going to be different, again, depending on what rating you are. So obviously, the higher rating you go, you need to have a stronger board to be stable. So always scout to kind of just see what other people's board states are at. And if they have like a lot of two stars or like a lot of expensive units, then like you probably have to roll a little bit more than you would like to. But then after you stabilize, you go to level seven, slow roll, and then hopefully you get all your units to three star. Keep in mind, stabilizing doesn't mean you have to beat everyone. It just means you can't take like six unit losses every time during stage three, because you just won't live uh, if that happens. Uh, but let's move on into Infinity Team. This is the standard leveling pattern comp that we have in the S tier right now, the only one. And it's like 4 cost Garen, 4 cost Samira, and then like cap out with the Legendary. This is the only comp that exists like that right now in the S tier. And it turns into like S plus if you have Infinity Team. So honestly, this comp is like A, A plus without Infinity Team emblem. So you could get that from either building it from Spatula, or you could get one of the Crest Augments or whatever. This comp is even more powerful if you get frontline infinite team for the first one and then backline for the second one. That's always the best layout. Uh, having two in the front is fine as long as you have an emblem. If you don't have an emblem, I don't really recommend playing this comp because you don't want to clone a Pantheon. You know, it's like nothing wrong with Pantheon, but compare them to Garen and there are a Fiddlesticks or an Aatrox and that's a pretty big difference. In the back line, in the early game, you want to clone your Sivir. After that, you want to clone your Ezreal once you get him. Uh, if you have like a two-star Twist of Fate, like sure, you could clone him too. Uh, it probably doesn't matter that much. It's really just for Ezreal, in my opinion, uh, because he just wipes the whole board if there are two of them. So onto the how to play section, it's pretty much standard leveling. You want to look to play this build when you have like Pantheon, Lucian, or like just the whole Infinity Team start, or if you have like a lot of attack damage items and you have like a Sure Shot opener, that could be done too. But the mid game is probably the hardest part if you don't have plus one infinity team. So that's just something to keep in mind because it's really difficult to jump between three and five infinity team because you literally get like double the units from the trait. And you, in order to do that, you need to find Twist of Fate. And it's so hard to find both Twist of Fate and you're also looking for Samira. So it's something that doesn't really happen too often for this build without the plus one infinity team. Nevertheless, very powerful comp because it caps out with Ezreal and he just absolutely destroys teams, especially if you like pick him off Carousel and get him for free like that. It's just very solid. And since there are so many units in the backline dealing damage, sometimes it could like deal with the hacker boards. Um, so it, pretty much just like generic AD items on like both Ezreal and Samira. You just need one last whisper. So just make sure you have that. And then worst case scenario, itemize your twist of fate with AP items. It's not like the worst thing ever. Uh, but let's move on into the A tier comps, starting off with Anima Squad. So again, as I said before, the higher up you are, the better Anima Squad is. The lower you are, the worse it is. I'd say if you are in like, I'd say if you are in like Masters Plus, Anima Squad might actually be like a B plus comp. But then as you get lower to Diamond, maybe it's like a B, maybe it's like an A minus comp. If it's, if you're in Platinum, maybe it's an A comp. And then if you're in Gold and below, it's going to be like an A plus comp. These are all approximates, of course, but it goes something like that because uh, Anima Squad relies a lot on stacking and you can stack easier against weaker opponents, right? Because there's not too much skill. Now, there is skill, but like when you're just playing five Anima Squad units on level five or like three Anima Squad units on level three, like you're not really making that many decisions, right? It's like going to be the same units every time. And you pretty much just hope you kill stuff so that you get stacks and then you just become unstoppable and snowball the game later on. But the higher and higher you get, when people are like building better boards, it's harder to get those stacks. So that's why it kind of works out that way. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still a solid comp. It's nothing like groundbreaking or anything, but if you do get like the Anma Squad spatulas, that's pretty much when like the higher level people are going to be playing this. But even then, it's a little risky to do right now. So again, if you're Masters Plus, probably don't play this. But if you're like below that, uh, it's probably fine to do. All you really need to do is go Shojin on Misfortune. Any two damage items will do. It doesn't have to be Jeweled Gauntlet, doesn't have to be Shield Breaker. You could even do like double Archangels to replace the Shojin. It's just a little more specific there because she really just needs mana to cast and Archangels gives bonus starting mana. Riven's gonna be your main tank, hopefully. And if you can get Riven to three star, if not, it's not the end of the world. If it's like two star Garen versus two star Riven, itemize the Garen or like two star Echo, two star Riven, itemize the Echo. But three star Riven would be the best tank here. Uh, so 
pretty much to play this comp, you play standard, and then at level seven, you're like, oh, do I wanna like re-roll for Riven? If you have a lot of copies of Riven, then sure, go for it. If not, go to level eight and then just play random good units after that. Uh, so all the like the random legendaries work well, like Fiddle Six works well, Urgot works well, uh, even like Asol works well, like just any of those splashable units are gonna be fine for you. Uh, I've even seen like Alistair temporarily because he gives you like Aegis and he gives you Mascot. So it's like pretty decent and he stuns someone. So it's not the end of the world if you end up playing him. Uh, but let's move on into the next build, which is Oxford Spell Spellslinger. This is, was one of my go-to comps, but it feels a lot weaker compared to the S tiers right now. I feel like I have to get really lucky in order to compete with some of the other comps, but that doesn't mean like I never play it. The signs where I go for this is when I'm going for LeBlanc and then all of a sudden I get like the easy being green hero augment. And that's when I normally go for this build because that's just a completely bonkers augment because Nico with easy being green, it gives you 50 ability power whenever you have a spear of Shoujin on someone. And that's just like so much value because Shoujin already gives so much. So if you compare it to some of the other four cost augments, like the benefit is just so huge. But yeah, as it says over here, and by the way, if you need like, uh, just like a quick summary, all the text below the pictures are like the takes of the comp on the week. So if you just want like a, so if you already know how to play the comp or something like that, but you want to see like what's new with it, just like take a look at whatever's typed below the images. But yeah, pretty much it is like a situational comp now. Like it's pretty much what I described before. You're like going AP and then you're like, I guess I'll go spell slingers, but like I'll try to go LeBlanc. And then you're like, hey, I got like something... I got like a t twist of fate for free or like an early twist of fate or like, hey, I got easy being green. Uh, then you would go for this build. Uh, but yeah, standard leveling because it's four cost carry. Next build up we have is Jin Renegades. Apart from Infinite Team, this is probably like the second best attack damage composition right now because uh, Jin is just not really played that much. So you could get him two star for free. And overall, the comp is actually pretty solid. There's like nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't have like that high of a cap compared to the Infinite Team comp. If you look at the legendaries here, the legendary is the Renegade, which is Leona. And getting a Leona, you're never angry that like, oh my God, like that guy got Leona off Carousel. Whereas when you look at Ezreal, you're like, holy cow, the Infinite Team guy got Ezreal off of Carousel. Uh, yeah, he's gonna win the game. Uh, it's like a different attitude whenever you see that kind of happen. So pretty much Jin is like the same power as Infinite Team. However, it just doesn't have the late game power spike that it gets. So that's why it's a little lower here, but it's still pretty solid. You could run like a duo carry, Viego and Jin, and then sometimes they pop off, sometimes they don't. Like overall, Jin is good at stabilizing because again, he's uncontested. So while everyone's going for the other four costs, uh, he's pretty much like forgotten a lot of times. Uh, next build up we have is Laser Core. So Laser Core, I don't know how far down it should be, but it's actually not that bad of a comp because they changed laser cores so that everyone gets it when you only have four of them before it used to be five. And because of that, you're not as reliant on hitting Mordekaiser. So remember when I was talking about Gadgetine, you need to hit the new new legendary in order to really spike the comp. Uh, in laser core, it's like Mordekaiser is more of like a nice to have instead of a need to have. So uh, whenever people talk about like wants and needs, like Mordekaiser is definitely a want, you know, whereas Nunu is like a need if you don't have the laser core emblem. Luckily, if you do get laser core emblem, six laser core is just like a huge power spike. And I've seen a lot of different experimental builds with this comp when you get there. Uh, so you see on Warwick right now, we have like damage items. We have Edge and Knife for survivability, Runons for damage, and Last Whisper for damage. But if you get like six laser core, you could honestly do like a tank Warwick build. I've seen people do that, and it's actually not that bad. You just needed laser core in order to make that happen and sometimes you don't really play around getting like a perfect laser core game uh, but it is something to consider other good items on him are like titan's resolve and then like the healing items are pretty decent but yeah you typically only go for this if you have like a laser core start or if you get one of the laser core augments because that is really the only reason why you would play this uh, next up we have is threats threats is like a backup plan so whenever you're going for leblanc let's say you have like a mana item and you have like an archangels or something like that or let's say you're going for Samira and you're like, oh yeah, I got my Last Whisper set and everything's fine and dandy there. But you're like, hey, I'm rolling down and you're just buying all the four cost units as you roll down. And you're like, hey, I hit a Belveth too, but I don't really see my Samiras. Well, in those cases, you could just play this comp or on the augment round when you're rolling for four cost augments and Asol's carry augment comes up or like Belveth's carry augment comes up and you're like hey yeah maybe i could go for that because i don't have another reroll left or like i don't want to risk a reroll and get like something even worse 
Uh, that's typically when you go for this threat build. And that sounds a little depressing, but honestly, that's what threats are for. They're never meant to be like, oh, wow, it's the best comp, you know, because it's like uh, you're not running any synergies. So how could it be the best comp? But like all the units individually are solid and it's kind of just like, hey, these are pretty good stat checks on some of their counterparts. And that's just pretty much going to be it. Also, you don't need threat level maximum in order to play this. You could play this. Uh, just like, again, as a backup plan and get your fourth. Sometimes you could even get a third with it because other people, they're going to be spending a lot more gold going for their specific carries. They're like, oh, I want my Samira two star, but they're only Samira one and they're like two infinity team players. They can't hit. And then you're like, hey, I got my Belveth two star for free. I go level nine and I'm going to beat you that way. That's essentially what this comp is trying to do. Uh, next up we have is built different. Only play this with the built different augment. Uh, never play it with anything else. Also keep in mind when you have this up here, you can play threat units. A lot of beginners ask me, they're like, hey, does built different work on threats? And the answer is no. And then they're like, oh, why do you have threats in your built different comp then? Uh, well, then you could just ask them, why do you have threats in your anima squad comp? Because Fiddlesticks is there. He doesn't benefit from anima squad. And that's the reality with threat units. Like you could splash them into any comp and that includes the built different comp so uh, always keep that in mind whenever you're playing the game when you have this augment try to run no traits but then you could also play fiddlesticks two star for example he's still going to be good in the comp uh, but this one really revolves around having like a main tank from either echo or garen and then playing around the ace carries so misfortune samira and then Jin, he doesn't have any traits either. Those are going to be your go-tos. And you may have noticed a lot of four cost units. So you probably want to go level eight with this comp before rolling just to hit all of them. But it really depends on your game. It's going to change from situation to situation. One thing I do want to note is again, you could run duplicates. So, so if you get like two Garens, two star, play both of them. You know, you don't need to like only play one copy of the unit. Actually, a lot of the strength from this comp comes from playing multiple units because uh, in the early game, Let's say you have two one-star Garens, you could just play both of them and then sell your other units for economy. And then when you do hit the Garen two-star, then you find another unit to play in place of the original one. But you typically go for this if you're going for a win streak early game. And yeah, pretty solid comp. And we have like some early game guides down here in the description. So definitely check that out because um, when you hit the augment, you will have time to kind of like read through this and figure out what's going on. Uh, but after that, we have Draven reroll. So Draven reroll, you could play him with Hacker, you could not play him with Hacker. You can kind of switch it up a little bit. It depends if he could survive in their back line or not. Like against some teams he can, against some teams he can't. And I don't want to say like, oh, against this team, he can't beat it. Or like against this team, he can always beat it. Because it always depends on what items you have. It always depends on what items they have. And it also depends on how strong they are. So let's just pretend hypothetically, Draven reroll always loses to Infinite Team because Samira is really strong. Let's just pretend that happens. So in those situations, you might think like, oh, let me always not hacker him over. But then there are situations when they have like a Samira one star, pretty bad items, in which case, in, and in those cases, you wanna send him over to just like smack the Samira over. So that's why it's kind of difficult to give like generic TFT advice a lot of times. And when people ask me very vague questions, it's really hard to give people an answer, but uh, you really just have to judge how strong your Draven is. Like maybe you have three items, maybe you have like really good augments for him, and that's gonna decide where to place him. Cause sometimes you wanna place your hacker unit on the same side as the enemy carries, and sometimes you wanna put him on the opposite side. Sometimes it's also difficult to fit hacker in for Draven because of the reasons we wrote here. Uh, but pretty much you play this just as a two cost reroll comp. Is he the only two cost reroll comp right now? Let, let me just double check. Uh, one cost, three cost, three cost, three cost. Oh, he is the best two cost reroll comp. I didn't realize that. So to do that, you want to have one econ augment typically. Golden ticket is probably the best one because uh, it's just like the sweet spot. Two, two cost reroll is just like the best thing to do for a golden ticket. But if you get like a rich get richer from gold tier augment, that one's fine too. You just need a few more dravens to like force the comp. Um, but yeah, items here, Last Whisper mandatory and then Infinity Edge also mandatory. After that, people generally like healing items, but uh, if you have like a healing augment such as Thrill of the Hunt or Celestial Blessing, then you don't really need that. You could just go like full damage and uh, that'll be that. Uh, Pike, great secondary tank, or sorry, great primary tank. Uh, just because Pike is Pike, he AoE CCs the enemy team as we discussed before. And pretty much the only other unit that does that is like Garen, Urgot, Fiddlesticks, Janna. Like all much more expensive units. So that's why like he's so good right now. And Hacker happens to be good. 
so he's like doubly good. That's why he's OP. Uh, but Sure Shots is the next comp. This is typically played with mech, so you mech up your Garen. It's pretty simple to play. You want to focus more on mech items than your Samira items. That's a mistake I see people making with this comp uh, because when you sacrifice two units to combine into one unit, you need items on them because items are pretty much like a multiplier. And when you're putting three in one, it's like a three for one deal for your items. You get like one item for three champions. You could kind of think of it that way. And then, so it just means that it's really important to get like good tank items on your Garen. Uh, so don't go for like triple item Samira as your first three items whenever you're playing mech. Go for like triple defensive first and then build the Samira items later. The only thing you absolutely need on Samira is Last Whisper. Apart from that, anything goes. Any two items will do. It could be like triple damage item. You could do one healing item with like Gunblade or Hand of Justice. And then like third item, always try to do damage. We have like a bunch of different options here. Um, I think the one that we're missing is like Guard Breaker is also good. That's about it. But you pretty much just play this board the same way you did Sure Shots from last set. If you guys remember that, you just go fast eight, roll for the four cost Garen and Samira and pray that you hit them kind of. Uh, but it depends how many people are going for Samira. If there are a lot of Infinity Team players, I would kind of avoid this comp. But there are other games where you get like the Garen two star for free. And let's say you had like a mech start. Uh, you could replace Samira with almost any other carry. You could do something like Misfortune plus mech. You could do something like Belveth or Asol plus mech. Uh, lots of different options there. Uh, but Jax is the next comp. This is just three cost reroll Jax. Secondary carry with Warwick, but you typically focus on Jax. Only do this with scope weapons or rapid fire cannon. Uh, you can do it without it, but like I wouldn't really recommend it unless you really know what you're doing, such as like a Jax one trick. But pretty much all you do is go to level 7, slow roll for Jax 3, and that's pretty much it. If you do get Brawler Crest or Brawler Heart or Brawler Crown, then you do go for level 8, play 8 Brawler, and, and that should stabilize you to like a 4th or a 5th. And then if you hit Jax 3, you go for something even better. Uh, that's going to be it for the A tier. B tier, we're not really going to go over that much. Vex is pretty solid still. Uh, you could go for like the 6 mascot build or the super build. Uh, maybe the six mascot one is better, but the B tiers, we don't really update the pictures that much. Um, but yeah, you guys can read the guides here if you want, because they have all the information you need when you play these comps. I actually play Vex a lot. Again, I think it's a little underrated right now. Uh, maybe it could be a little bit better. You just need like very specific starts for them. That's why I think it's a little low right now. A uh, heart reroll with like Sona, pretty solid, but against LeBlancs, it's kind of hard to play right now. Uh, Duelist. Yeah, even with Locket starts and like four duelists, ah oh man, this comp is really frustrating to play because you're taking a big risk about not hitting your champions. And then even if you hit your champions, the you typically just go like fourth at best, like a third, and then you go to the next game. So, but then when you don't hit stuff, like you go eighth, and then I, I don't like that trade that much. So that's why I don't really like duelists right now. So I'd really only go for this if I have both Locket at the start of the game with like a bow and I can play four duelists at the start of the game or I have like two star gangplank two star kale I don't really build any items but then all of a sudden after Krugs I have like a locket plus good AD items and I found the other duelists already and I was just playing gangplank and kale to like just win my early game through a win streak that'd be like the other situation where I'd play them but like yeah really risky to play in my opinion with not much reward you guys know like high risk high reward this one's like high risk medium reward so it's like not worth it at all jinx reroll this one's just relying on the augment again we will be adding more comps as the set goes on and hopefully we'll, we will have every champion carry augment it is a little bit much but like sometimes people just want to know what to play with each and every one of those carry augments uh, but yeah now onto the items because that's like pretty much just as important as everything else we discuss, if not even more important because it sets up the rest of your game. I did recently release an augment guide on like how to play, and that goes over how to play around your augments in the early game. And the same thing goes for items. It's the most important part of the game. If you have a good early game, the rest of the game plays itself pretty much. So definitely know the order about what the best items are. It's gonna be tier right now because Hacker LeBlanc, Lucian Reroll are both really good. And then Bow and Sword are really good for all the AD comps because it's like Infiniteam, Samira, Warwick, and Jin are both in the A tier. And then you could even use Sword for LeBlanc because you want the Edge and Knight, right? Or you could build a Shoujin on her. Like if you get two swords in a LeBlanc comp, like Shoujin, Edge and Knight, yeah, like Shoujin isn't best in slot or whatever, but it's still like pretty replaceable with the blue buff. But it's all pretty good stuff there. Uh, Rod's just solid because 
every AP comp needs rod and like a lot of the top ones need that. But yeah, after that, defensive items are still pretty solid, but they're weaker because hackers jump past your tank. So it's not as important to have a good front line right now. It's more important to kind of just like kill everything faster so that they could focus the hacker unit as soon as possible. But yeah, definitely check out the augment guide after you guys went over that item section. I should post it up here. So I'll do that right after this video. It pretty much tells you which augments to pick in the early game and when to do them. Because a lot of people, they just look at the data on augments and they're like, oh, let me auto pick it. And then they lose a the game because they picked Infiniteam augment when they had no Infiniteam units. And then they're like, hey, why, why did that happen? But it's because they picked it in the wrong situation and they like overly relied on data. So uh, make sure not to do that because that's like a trap that a lot of like, not new players face, but it's something that like a lot of more advanced players face. They think they know how to do the data stuff when they just really don't and then it just screws them over. I'll give you guys an example and I don't mean to be a bully or anything or like that, but I just want to give an example of like why data is really deceptive. So this guy made a hacker LeBlanc guide and overall it's like pretty solid. I disagree with some points obviously and uh, that's always going to happen with like any player, right? Uh, but the thing is like one thing he looked at was data and he said that LeBlanc is really good with Gadgetine. So this is a hacker LeBlanc guide. This isn't like a hacker guide where he's going over like how to play NAR and how to play LeBlanc. Uh, but all the data for like Gadgetine LeBlanc, it's only good because people are playing NAR. It's not because it's good in the LeBlanc comp. Uh, so that's why like data can be a little deceptive. Again, like I'm not trying to bully people or anything, but I can promise you that the people playing like LeBlanc carry are not playing Gadgetine Heart in their builds. But again, the data says that Gadgetine Heart averages a 2.33 with LeBlanc 3. And while that is true, uh, a lot of those games are going to be because of they're playing NAR carry, not because they're playing LeBlanc carry. But yeah, that's pretty much all I really want to say um, in terms of data. Maybe he doesn't think it's a mistake still, uh, but uh, that's one of those times where I think data can be a little deceptive for some players. Again, like not trying to flame or anything like I've made those mistakes too like people can point those out as well and like yeah that's just how life is sometimes but um that's gonna be it for me today hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and that's and definitely check us out on mecha cup this weekend it's gonna be on saturday and sunday uh, so i hope to see you guys there on my twitch hey guys thanks so much for watching don't forget to share and subscribe and of course smash that like button each like is an lp i gained before the next video